All right, so in this video, I will be explaining you the electrophoretic movement of some of the hemoglobin molecules, especially adult hemoglobin, uh, sickle cell hemoglobin, and HBC hemoglobin. And also, I will be giving a special emphasis on a charge of anode and cathode. So, let me write down the electrophoretic slide or the electrophoretic movement bands here. So, consider this is the electrophoretic slide or maybe you know, cellulose, acetate, membrane or any kind of media that is used in electrophoresis. So, the first thing, very first thing that you should remember is what is cathode and what is anode. So, cathode is a negatively charged molecule. So, you really need to remember this. This is the one which will be confusing. So, cathode is a negatively charged diode and anode anode is a positively charged diode now these are the two things that is must you need to remember that cathode is negative and anode is positive now sample of application so we apply sample down here nearer to the cathode so what we will do is we will take three samples and that is one is AA I will write this as adult hemoglobin and then we have another sample that is say SS that is sickle hemoglobin and then we have HBC disease I will write it as A and C because out of two beta chains one is normal other is of C type okay that is HBC. Now adult hemoglobin it has two other beta chains here and two beta chains are normal where glutamate is not really replaced by anything that is a normal thing. So uh, since glutamate is a negatively charged amino acid so it has got a negative charge so it will move all the way down to anode so it will be closer to anode because it has got a negatively charged glutamate there. So adult hemoglobin will move all the way towards anode. Now sickle hemoglobin. So you all know the molecular change in the sickle hemoglobin. Beta chain, sixth position, glutamate is replaced by valine. And glutamate is a negatively charged amino acid. Valine is a non-polar amino acid. So you have lost one negative charge there. So because of this what happens? Two beta chains in sickle cell anemia, both are, they are mutated. It means it will move all the way, it will move to the middle somewhere here and it will stop because it has lost a negative charge. So your two beta chains will move to the midway down there. Now HBC, HBAC that is one beta chain is normal and other beta chain is of C type. Now what is C type here? Where beta chain 6 amino acid glutamate is now replaced by lysine. So, lysine is a positively charged amino acid. So, it means you have taken out a negative charge and you replaced with a positive charge and that is why since it has a positive charge, it means C band or the C globin there with the change, it will be nearer to the cathode whereas the normal adult beta chain, one of the beta chain that is normal, it will go all the way towards the anode. So, one of the band will be nearer to the cathode, another band will be nearer to the anode. So, it means in HBC disease, if, if both the beta chains are of C type, it means both will be nearer to the cathode here because negative lysine is a positively charged molecule, it will be nearer to cathode which is a negative charge. So, in that sense, adult hemoglobin will go all the way towards the anode, sickle cell disease where be, both the beta chains are of S type, so they will be there in the middle. And HBAC, one normal adult beta chain, go all the way towards anode and C type beta chain will be there nearer to cathode. If it is HBC disease where both the beta chains are of C type, both will be remaining here near the cathode. This is all about the electrophoretic migration, about adult hemoglobin, HBSC disease and HBAC disorder. Thanks for watching.